Hey, what's going on everyone with Unreal Fest Stockholm right around the corner. I thought it would be a fun idea to go back and look at some of the really great talks that were given at Unreal Fest Orlando with the release of 5.6. I was lucky enough to go to Orlando this year and saw a few of the talks in person, but the great thing about Unreal Fest is that they put all of these talks out on YouTube in the following months, and now that we're almost at the next Unreal Fest, pretty much all of the talks from Orlando are out, so I wanted to highlight a few of them that are especially interesting if you're focused on motion capture in Unreal Engine. So the first one to check out is the future of animation retargeting, which is very on the nose if you're interested in motion capture. This talk starts out by going over where Unreal has been when it comes to motion capture and animation retargeting in the past, which is really good context to understand how far Unreal Engine has come at this point in 5.6 and going into 5.7. They walk through the basic process of animation retargeting in Unreal, but the great thing is they do it with a non-standard skeleton. I always find that examples that use the most basic or the easiest to use you know, type of example is the least helpful. I want to see an example that features a difficult problem, and that's what they go through in this talk. Another thing that they go through is the new operation stack or op stack. This is amazing basically now you can choose in which order operations are performed during your animation retargeting in the ik retargeter and that means if you want to evaluate ik before fk or fk before ik or do a bunch of other operations you have a lot more control over how that's done and specifically one thing that they also go through is something called source scaling so this is something you can add in the op stack that essentially scales down your source motion capture so that it matches your character that you're retargeting to. Functionally, what this does is help eliminate foot sliding. It does a couple other things as well, but one of the huge things that it does is help fix foot sliding between disparately proportioned motion capture actors and characters. And this is really amazing. This is something that you've only really been able to do in kind of Maya and other programs, but it hasn't been easy. It's a lot easier to do in Unreal now, and it's definitely worth checking out if you're doing retargeting in, in Unreal. Another one that I would check out is rigging for animators. So there's been a lot of progress made with control rigs in Unreal since 5, whenever they introduced the modular control rig, but things are even better now. Again, they use a non-standard character to show you how useful control rigs can be. They go through an example with some tentacles, especially using control rigs with physics. They added physics to control rig in a huge way. So now you can get secondary motion on your characters through control rig in really interesting and new ways that give you a lot more control. They go through a bunch of other stuff, especially if you're a rigger, it's definitely worth watching. But one other call out is that they have added blend shapes to Unreal in a way that makes it way easier to use them, add them, and work with them. They go through an example of using blend shapes and also control rig to animate the environment that a character is in as opposed to a character itself. So super interesting, lots of new stuff and, and a lot of new kind of ways to use control rigs that are novel compared to what they've been tr traditionally used for. Finally, Richard Graham, who is awesome, gave a great talk on the state of performance capture in 5.6 and moving into 5.7. So performance capture is, you know, like virtual production when you have a character or performer in a live motion capture suit and you're seeing that feedback in Unreal Engine in real time. That's performance capture in this context. And Richard goes through all the new additions to the system which have been, again, varied and vast. There are lots of new ways to see your motion capture being performed live in Unreal compared to how it used to work. And there's also a couple fundamental changes that have happened to virtual production and virtual performance capture. And so this is definitely something that's worth checking out as well. There's also new skeleton types for performance capture, including a new uh, Rococo template and a bunch of other things that give you, again, just way more control over how you are doing performance capture in Unreal Engine. So those are three that are specific to motion capture, but I encourage you to go to their YouTube channel and check out the rest of them because there's a bunch of great ones on Chaos, on Cloth, and then two other ones that I'll call out specifically are creating bespoke characters with MetaHuman Creator. So now MetaHuman Creator has moved into Unreal Engine as opposed to 
the web portal that it used to be on. So this goes over, you know, how to create a new character, a bunch of the new body type adjustments that you can make and things like that. Definitely worth watching. And then the other one I'll call out specifically is MetaHuman colon facial expression editing. And this one actually walks through the workflow for working with MetaHuman expressions in Maya, which again is gives you tons of new control. They've opened up MetaHumans to all the platforms officially. You in the past were not supposed to be using MetaHumans in Maya or in Blender but now you officially can. And so this goes through some Maya workflows for facial expression editing. So again, those are three that I would really check out if you are working with motion capture in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has gone through a lot of changes in the last few years. And specifically with 5.6, there were lots of new things added that are worth checking out, especially if you're in there every day, working with motion capture, retargeting, doing control rig stuff, animating characters, animating the environment. These talks from Unreal are always fantastic, and the fact that they're on YouTube and you can go through them at your own pace and you can kind of follow along with what they're doing is a really great opportunity for anyone who's in Unreal Engine. And as I said at the beginning of the video, Unreal Fest Stockholm is right around the corner, so we'll have a whole new crop of incredible new talks coming out in the next few months. So go check out the Unreal Engine YouTube channel if you want to find out more. I'll put the links down in the description below as well. And hopefully this is helpful. See you in the next video.